And welcome back. Time for our Wednesday success story. Now Charles D'Angelo joins us as he every, every does every week. And today, Charles, we're talking about disconnecting from food. Now, what does that mean? I think it's the most important, really the most vital component that most programs are lacking or most approaches are lacking. That is the mindset of controlling yourself with regard to when you eat, what food you're eating, making sure that the choices are only healthful, and that you're not allowing yourself to become uh, or to fail, really, in planning. I think the planning is the most important part. Making the decision first off to commit to a program and then following that up with a very structured, detailed, outlined plan of this is what I'm going to eat, this is what I'm going to eat, this is how much I'm going to eat, so that the thought process is really removed from it. Once you take the thought out of it, the emotion follows that. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn how to disconnect the, food, the emotion that you've tied to the food, then you're much more able to stick with that approach and that program, regardless of the program that you choose to follow. And that's interesting you say program. How important is to follow a program rather than do it on your own? You know, we were just talking a moment ago, you know, my wife and I say, well, we're going to eat better, we're going to eat healthier starting Monday. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but how, much, how important is it to, to follow a structure? Well, I think that there's no lack of data as far as what's healthy out there to eat, what exercise uh, that you should do, DVDs, all those things. I think if the claims that all those programs make were true, we wouldn't see what we see in the airports, we wouldn't see what we see on the street. I think that what everything else is missing is what you just talked about, that is this part. Because if it comes down to a one-on-one -on -one match between this and this, <laughs> this wins out. Yeah. If it comes to a one-on-one -on -one match between this and this, this still wins out. So having somebody there, having accountability, I think that's part of the mindset. Mm -hmm. Having a coach, a mentor, or having a plan that you know without a shadow of a doubt will work and holding yourself accountable to that. If that means having someone, having a trainer, you mentioned mm -hmm. going to a trainer before, or having someone that's important in your life to help hold you accountable, that can really be helpful. It's not necessary but I think that it is helpful. Right, and I think what, you know, you were talking about the, the, the getting to a, po a program. That way, when you are in a program, you can see progress, can't you? And, and, you, and you have someone else, maybe as a cheerleader or a personal trainer. It's really, really unique. One of my clients uh, in town, a notable politician, I won't drop names, hmm. but uh, she publicly made it known that she was going on her weight loss journey on my program and would hold herself accountable by posting things on Twitter. So now with social media, with Facebook, with Twitter, that allows for a free way to keep yourself honest, mm -hmm. to keep yourself accountable, and to see measurable results. And knowing that the diet that you're following, the exercise program you're following will work, it's based on math and science. If you're following a healthful plan with foods, a very conscientious plan with exercise, you know that if you keep yourself consistent, which then plays into that third piece that I mentioned, the mindset, the consistency, so that you're not forgetting to make sure that you have all the foods you need. You're not making mm -hmm. uh, an excuse to miss exercise. If you can make sure that you're taking care of that mindset component, the third leg to the stool, if you will, the whole thing works. But if you're missing that third leg, if you're missing this part, mm -hmm. the stool collapses on itself. All right. Yeah, sometimes it's better to let people know that, that you're involved in a program rather than hide it and feel embarrassed. Because mm -hmm. I, I find in things like that, you get more supportive the more people you, you are talking to about what you're doing. Well, it certainly would be a bit embarrassing if you make yeah. it so public and then you don't stay committed to right. it. Uh, I think that disconnecting from food, the emotion, back to the main topic, is the most important thing, though, because if you constantly are looking for a way to fill an empty void that you have within yourself, if it's boredom, if it's because you want to distract yourself, it's because you feel sad or you want to celebrate, if you feel that or fill that with food, you're going to be fighting this battle long after you've lost the weight. So really learn how to disconnect from that. And then after you've disconnected, mm -hmm. have an approach to reconnect. That is the most important part. It's going to be tough to disconnect from those nachos and hot dogs for the World Series, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> there is chicken breast down at the ballpark, ladies and gentlemen. Good uh, point. Good point. All right. That's Charles D'Angelo. Thanks so much my pleasure. for being with us again. Coming up, the ins and outs of hybrid cars in today's tech report, the latest.